WI and Dr. Eugene Cherney in the studio with us, and I like this show because one one of the uh, the neat things about this program is we have a game plan about what you were going to talk about right off the bat, and then something could happen in the last couple of hours, and we can just shift gears a little bit. We're still going to get to your topic uh, that we want to discuss, but something happened and everybody's talking about. Oh my Jackie. gosh, I don't know why people are so obsessed with Renee Zellweger's face, but it is something interesting to talk about. So some people are she's claiming she's living a very healthy, happy lifestyle. And yes. that's what happened. Other people are, are quoting uh, uh, plastic surgeons and they're trying mm -hmm. to figure out what she might have done. So being a plastic surgeon, we just wanted your take on it. it. It's just gone viral. I haven't seen this much talk about a celebrity plastic surgery since Heidi Montag had like right. 30 operations done at one time. <laughs> and, you know, and she's just saying that because I've read that it's very interesting. The celebrities actually don't mind if you talk about all their affairs. They don't care what personal dirt gets out into the tabloids, but what they will not talk about what is taboo is talking about their plastic surgery. Surgery, right. That is like really taboo in Hollywood. So, well, I would say she looks significantly older and looking at the previous photographs, they're not that long ago. I think she had a significant weight loss and as a result of that, that accelerated her aging and she had to have something done or else she would have looked really old. To us, That's it looks like I her think. eyes, okay. uh, Jackie thought the picture looked like her eyes shut more, but on the contrary, I think her eyes opened up more. You see more of the whites of her eyes now. You can see her almost all the way around her iris. Well, to yes. me, her cheekbones look different and her forehead looks different, which has affected her eyes. Fat but that's me. Oh, and I, no, and I agree. You're right. It, one of the really hot things in plastic surgery now is fat injection. She's got more volume in your cheeks. And when you get older, you, oh, you, you okay. lose volume. You don't gain volume. So I can guarantee you she had some fat lipoed maybe from her tummy or from her butt and re-injected into her cheeks. Okay. And that gave her, you know, that, and that's like her signature thing. She had to have that done. That's mm -hmm. her signature thing are, are those cheeks of hers. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you'll look again, her forehead is a little higher. It looks high, so, yeah. So, so she may very well have had a brow lift and had everything pulled up but you know in the picture her brows aren't that much higher see this operation actually doesn't lift the brows as much as you'd like but it does smooth the forehead very much so that's either Botox or a brow lift that she's had in her forehead and her eyes are bigger which is usually a very attractive thing too her but eyes are bigger so she probably had an eyelid tuck you're saying she's getting older and we should just be okay with that and she's mm -hmm. dealing with it in the way she thinks is best I think so and it's there, there, there's been actually a lot of discussion about this. You know, a lot of people are are getting down on her, and and it's getting back to the discussion about women having a right to do with their bodies as they see fit, and uh, and that's that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. And if this makes her happy, this is her right to do this. And that's what she claims in all of her interviews: is I'm just living a, a happier lifestyle. So if that's what makes her happy, then. Do it. Yeah, welcome yep. to NCSI Des Moines as That's we right. just solve well, that crime. I just can't believe how many people are talking, and we're talking about it, so we're guilty as well. But it's just, it, it exploded. It's like, let the woman do whatever she wants. She looks fine either way. I agree, and if it makes her happy, th this is why I have the best job in the world, because I make people happy like this. Right. And everybody's talking about it, I guess because it's a, a slow news day or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> something. Right, well, something. Well, we, don't, we, we know that something may have been done there, but we don't know if anything was done lower on her body, but we're here to talk this morning about something a lot of people have questions yes. about. We were going to talk about tummy tucks today. Ah, oh my goodness. We were going to talk about tummy tucks. And that's the same person? That is the same person. That is making an incision and pulling out all that loose stuff. Now I want to I want to just, just point out to some people that that uh, a tummy tuck is needed most of the time because you've had children. Right. And a lot of a lot of women are really down on themselves and feel really guilty because they feel that they have these terrible tummies, and it's their fault because they haven't done enough sit-ups, they haven't dieted and exercised enough, and they carry a burden of guilt about this. But a lot of patients. It doesn't matter how many sit-ups you do. What happens after pregnancy is that the muscle of the tummy is stretched out. And that's what gives you a belly that sticks out. And then that skin becomes loose, also stretched out from the pregnancy. Mm. So, frankly, most patients that need a tummy tuck, it's not actually their fault. It's one of those, it's one of, it's one of those sacrifices you make for your children. It's the first one that you make and, you know, the sacrifice for your children. Keep on coming. They don't end till you die. <laughs> so, uh, You're just saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But so, but anyway, it's it's something that a lot of people feel guilty about. And this, the tummy is something that everybody focuses on. It's in the middle of the body. And if, and if you have, you know, body issues, 
people usually prioritize the tummy first. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that people are the most embarrassed about. But it's something that's beyond your control if you had kids and you shouldn't be embarrassed about, and it's something that you can get fixed. So the, the muscle is able to fix itself over time, but ne not necessarily the skin on top. Well, actually, the muscle actually has developed a physical gap, and, you, and in a tummy tuck operation, we actually take that muscle and we sew it together. Oh, and you that br bring the pieces together. Yeah, because it's been just pushed apart by the size of the baby. So the, the idea of the operation is to get at that muscle and to pull it together, and you pull it in as tightly as you can. Right. You, you know, we even, we joke in the operating room, we want it so tight that you could bounce a quarter off of it. And you make it a little extra tight where the waistline is, where the belly button is, because that gives you a deep waistline, which brings out your curves. And then you pull out that extra skin, and it's just like a C-section scar, basically, in the end. Now, so that's what a tummy tuck is. Is this done in association with liposuction or not necessarily? It can be. It can be. It depends. You know, it depends on your on your weight. And if you have a little, if you have a little fluff on the sides, it's nice to lipo that. You know, would you do that at the same time then? Yeah, it's 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 safe and beneficial to do that at the same okay. time. Right. So that's, uh, that's what a, this is what a tummy tuck is. It's part of the mommy makeover. Is is what I was. So what if you have it. that the tummy tuck done and the lipo, that'd be called full service. Well, that's full. That is the full Monty, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the recovery like? What I imagine there's there's probably a little bruising and, and how do you how do you handle that? You know, the recovery was actually revolutionized two years ago through new medical technology and I just I'm so happy about this new drug. A drug came out, it's called Exparel. It's a slow release local anesthetic. If we inject this medicine, it's actually a well known local anesthetic in a new in a new form. You inject it everywhere you worked. What it gives you is a little trickle of anesthetic over a 72-hour period. Wow. 72 hours, the whole area you've operated on is numb. You don't even feel it. Hmm. So the benefit of that is that there's no pain. So I have people up and walking around and doing stuff the day after the surgery. Okay. Wow. Which is which is, is that fabulous. recommended? Uh, yes, actually it is because when people get up, they don't get the complications the same uh, way. They don't okay. get blood clots in their leg. They don't get you know you know phlegm in their lungs and all these okay. other. Things. So what happens after 72 hours? Then? You know, by then you're over the hump anyway, and you take some pain medicine, but it's you don't need as much as you would otherwise. Oh. Okay, right, which so is wow. very sweet. So, I mean, definitely there's some bruising. So, but with this new drug and the rapid recovery now, I would say that two weeks off work is probably plenty. Right. You know, for this, and some people go back to work sooner. Some women, you know, actually work from home, and some of them start working like a few days after the operation. Sure. Wow. So, you know, but this is just this is a little schematic here on the on the muscles of the abdomen. There, you see why you get a six pack because of the way the muscles are are made. That shows one type of scar. Now, is that where the gaps are real big in between those muscle fibers? Yep, especially straight down the middle. Some I've seen it where it's like this wide apart. Wow. And you're just cranking it together until there. There you go. There, there it is with the stitches. So it's like a shoe. You just t put the laces on and pull it together. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Try to put it in one way of looking at it. Yeah. 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 Well, same principle. And you see the scar like hides. Or a corset. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We like the the scar to be low so you can hi hide it under a bikini bottom. Right. Okay. I tell, ah, good point. I tell all my patients, I'm getting you in a two-piece bathing suit, and they don't believe me, and I say, hell yeah, I'm going to get you in a two-piece bathing suit. <laughs> whether, you, whether you like it or not, I'm getting you into a two-piece bathing suit, and you usually can, really. That's awesome. That's I cool. never knew that. See, you learn something new. Yeah. Every time this guy Every comes day. over here, this is pretty cool. I like that. So if people want to get more information on this and the procedure. Yeah, we have our, we have our monthly seminars the second Tuesday of every month. I think uh, we'll, we'll talk about that on our, on our next visit. Right. And I'm at heartlandps.com. We're in the full book, too, if you still do that. And this is something that brings a lot of happiness. It's, I would say it's one of our signature procedures. And I think, you know, patients like it a lot. And it's a great place, too, right down the road from Living History Farms. Yes, so sir. Easiest way to remember that. Perfect. Yep. Wonderful. Good seeing you, my friend. My pleasure. All right.